Hello and welcome to another episode of Simulation in Action. Today's topic is critical buckling, the forgotten mode of structural failure. My name is James Herzling and I'm a technical consultant here at Autodesk. The problem that we're going to be looking at today is a st truss structure with a 50,000 pound force on it being fixed in four locations and also taking advantage of symmetry boundary conditions. The key learning objectives are how to import a surface model from Inventor, how to generate a plate mesh, how to set up crit a critical buckling analysis, and how to interpret the buckling load multiplier. Let's jump into the software. As you can see, we're starting in the Autodesk Inventor environment. You can see that we have both solid parts and surface parts over in the model tree. If we turn off the solid part, you can see only the surfaces remain. Let's go up to the Autodesk Simulation tab and launch it up in the top corner. This is going to automatically send our geometry over to the simulation mechanical environment. As you can see, the model automatically launches and we're choosing critical buckling as our analysis type. You can also notice that there are many parts listed there, roughly 68 in total. Each of these individual surface parts in Inventor come over as individual parts in our model. We're going to begin by applying a plate mesh and going into the options and deactivating in the models two of our checkboxes. This is going to give us a nice fine mesh on our part. If we click the mesh button, we're going to see all 68 parts are meshed at the same time and our end result is a very fine mesh. Let's click no to viewing the mesh results and zoom in and see what kind of mesh we have on these different parts. Zooming in on this corner, you can see a very nice fine mesh throughout all of these pieces. Since they are plates, you can see that they are infinitely thin uh, as displayed on the screen. If we highlight all of our parts in the model tree, we can choose to edit and change the element definition. In here, we're going to go ahead and type in 0.605 for our thickness. Now each plate is going to be defined to have that thickness. The th next thing we have to do is define a material for our parts. We're assuming all of our I-beams are created out of A36. So again, right click and choose edit and choose material. When we do this, we can click on the plus sign next to steels. And as you can see, go into the ASTMs and choose A36 and click OK. So with these defined, all of the red X's are gone from the model tree and we have to start applying our loads and boundary conditions. If we spin our model around here, we can then easily go to the bottom and apl apply fixed boundary conditions where we would have, say, beams holding up this truss structure. So with surface select mode chosen, we can go ahead and click on predefined surfaces that were split inside of Inventor to add our boundary conditions to. So we're going to go ahead and choose all four locations, selecting a total of eight surfaces, and then we're going to go to the Setup tab and choose General Constraints. In General Constraints, we can click the Fixed button, OK, and you're going to see little green triangles show up representing that our part is now fixed at those locations. If we zoom in, you can see a better idea what they look like. All right, so next we're going to have to add some more boundary conditions. This time we're going to use nodal constraints to represent our symmetry boundary conditions. Zooming in again makes it a little easier for us to select these. We rectangle select all of the nodes on the edge, and then on the other side, repeat the process selecting those nodes. Again, we're going to go into the Setup tab and choose General Constraints once we have all of the nodes selected. And when we do so, since we have Z going perpendicular to the surface, that's the surface that was cut, we choose Z symmetry. Next, we have to apply our surface load to the model. We're going to go ahead and select surfaces with the point select command. If we zoom in, it will be a little easier for us to choose these surfaces. And so with the screen zoomed in, we're going to choose the two surfaces, click on the Setup tab, and then choose Surface Force. Here we can type in a negative value so that our force is pushing down in the negative Y direction. Choose the Y radio button and click OK. With all of this done, the last thing we have to do is apply gravity. So if we go and click the Parameters button, click on the Gravity and Acceleration tab. You can just click the Set for Standard Gravity button, type what direction you want in, again, minus Y, and click OK. 
With this, we're now ready to analyze. Click on the Run Simulation button, and off it goes. All right, with the simulation now finished, we're going to jump over to the results environment and see what results we have to look at. You can see that the colors aren't looking real nice first off. That's because of the very fine mesh that we have. Giving ourselves a little more room, let's click on the View tab and then click on a shaded type to view. Now you can see a very nice contour of displacement. Now these displacement values don't really mean too much. They're normalized values. What we're interested in is the buckling load multiplier, 1.6. This means that our part isn't going to buckle, but, it's going to be able, but it would be able to hold 1.6 times the amount of load that is applied right now. If we click through the other modes, you'll notice the mul multiplier only increases, and that improves our chances of success. That's all you have to learn about critical buckling. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the SimSquad.